Hey yo guys, time for my Ring of Honor Take No Prisoners pay-per-view review. Ring of Honor Take No Prisoners pay-per-view review aired last night. It was taped from Philadelphia and part of it was from Orlando, so let's just get to the review. The pay-per-view started out with the usual Dave Prezak and Lenny Leonard welcoming us to the show and saying why, you know, this pay-per-view is going to show why the Ring of Honor athletes just take no prisoners. And then we went to the straight up into the ring for the core four corner survival and we had a pan back to Nigel McGuinness watching on a monitor which I thought was funny I'm like dude this is like basically the biggest indie promotion in the world they don't have monitors but anyways let's just get to the first match which was four corner survival Claudio Castagnoli versus Tyler Black versus Go Shiyazaki versus Delirious the winner of this match would face Nigel McGuinness for the ring of honor world title later on in the show uh, we started before the match that they all three Speaking guys got to cut a little promo here saying why they were, which was good. Uh, Nigel on commentary was nice. I mean, he basically was acting super heelish, saying that none of these guys deserve to be in there with him. And any of the fans that don't like him, they can kiss his ass. And any of the fans that do like him, well, they're not true fans because they're not going to be there to support him when he gets out of bed in the morning and he's when he's 30 or in the next night in the hospital. Uh, but the match was dang good. I mean, we had some hilarity at the beginning. Uh, Claudio and Delirious doing the comedy spots before we went to uh, uh, Greco Norman Knuckle Lock. Uh, but the best parts of this match was when Tyler Black and Go Shizaki got in there. Uh, these guys would stiff the hell at each other like hard chops. Uh, Black went for a big move in there, but he got caught in the tree of woe and Go just chopped the hell out of him there. Uh, Claudio, he got the giant swing on Go, which got a big hey chant, which was nice. Uh, Go got a nice kick. Uh, right on Claudio's jaw. I mean, this was a big, big one here. Uh, Delirious, he hit a Rana on Tyler Black, and he had uh, Go Shizaki in the corner, so he hit double panic attacks on both. Uh, and then the finish came when Black got a Phoenix Splash on Delirious to get the win and take on Tyler Black later on the night. This was fun. This was a great way to start the show, and Nigel's commentary developed the characters a lot more and added more to the match. Really was a bonus, considering you had Dave Prezak in the announcer's booth. Then from there we went to the uh, Roderick Strong versus Kevin Steen. This one started off fast with uh, Strong making a big charge at Steen and Steen delivering a couple chops before making the Roderick chant, just how the fans chant his name, which is always funny. Uh, Steen got a nice flip over leg drop. There was tons of chop. These guys beat the living hell out of each other. In a match between these two guys in JAPW and it was basically like stiff, 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 stiff chops and this was nonetheless. Uh, I mean, there was a nice innovative Dragon Sleeper by Strong where he had the arm trapped and he had the uh, head locked under the arm, which was nice. Uh, Steen had a Cannonball Senton in the corner, and, which was, you know, one of my favorite moves to have happen, which is nice. Uh, Strong reversed a Sharpshooter and he put, to get him into the Stronghold, but Steen reversed that and put him into a pinning predicament. Uh, Strong eventually, or Steen eventually got the Sharpshooter on. And which started to develop the knee pain in uh, Strong's leg. And so he started selling that like a badass. And eventually Steen got a crescent kick on the jaw and Strong was selling that like no tomorrow. And eventually Steen got the win after uh, he got out of the Gibson driver attempt and delivered a package pile driver to get the win. Fun little match. These guys skipped the heck out of each other. Then we went to the next match was the Philadelphia Street Fight. The Necro Butcher and Joy Matthews representing the Age of the Fall versus the Briscoe Brothers. This match was a great street fight. I mean, not as good as the Steen Generico Boston street fight, but still good. Uh, Necro Butcher busted up Mark Briscoe so hard with a shovel to the head. Uh, these guys were just brawling everywhere. Even Daisy Hayes and Lacey got into the brawl, which was nice. Uh, the Fall had a nice double superplex spot. Uh, there was a double choke slam by the Age of the Fall on chairs. Uh, Jay hit a flatliner into the turnbuckle on Matthews before he tossed uh, Mark a chair who was springboarding in and he delivered a chair shot right to Necro's head, which was nice. Uh, Matthews got backdropped over the top rope and his, his whole body hit Necro's head, which was on the table, which is an intense spot. Uh, Briscoe's did a springboard doomsday on Matthews. For one on Necro with a chair set up, but Necro stiffed them. Uh, Jay hit the DVD, uh, the Death Valley Driver on Matthews in a to, through a chair table, excuse me, that was set up in the corner. Mark did a big splash off the top of the structure of the set onto Necro Butcher, and Jay hit the J Driller on Matthews to get the win. So this was just a fun brawl. The only thing that worries him out is Mark Briscoe's health. I mean, this guy he won't be around for much longer if he keeps up. But hey, give it up to both guys. They put in a hell of a match. 
Then we went to the Larry Sweeney show. Uh, Sweeney says that he's basically going to buy all the top talent and ship them up the river to Vince. And then he brought out the Hangman 3 and Adam Pearce announced that they were selling out and joining Sweet and Sour Incorporated. Uh, Brent, and then, we, when, then that brought out Eric Stevens, which said he wanted a match with Pewter, but because Sweeney has these regulations that Ring of Honor won't meet, he didn't get it. So a match and Brent Albright then came and attacked him so we got a match between Brent Albright and Eric Stevens. This match wasn't the best of matches on the show I mean but it's something you can just sit through and enjoy. Uh, Albright did a dive but Stevens caught him and delivered a Samoan drop which was very nice there. Uh, Albright had a nice wheel barrel suplex. Uh, Stevens hit a pump handle slam on Albright but Sweeney grabbed Albright's foot put it on the rope which distracted uh, Stevens and that led Brian Albright get the half Nelson suplex for the win. You know, pretty enjoyable match. I mean, not the best thing on the show, but you know, it's certainly something you can't cry and sneeze about. Then we went to Orlando for the Ring of Honor World Tag Title match, the No Remorse Core versus the Vulture Squad. This match was just wow, so fast, lots of innovative dives, lots of innovative moves, lots of innovative anything basically. Jigsaw had a flip dive over the top rope at the start. Did a cartwheel press on onto Richards. Uh, Ruckus did the razzle dazzle and the roll up scissors kick. The Vulture Squad hit the inside cradle suplex into a sit out power bomb. The Vulture Squad did a double coast to coast when Romero was in the tree of wool. And then from here, the Noro NRC got things going here when Romero kicked Ruckus off the top rope and he kicked uh, Jigsaw. He kicked uh, Richards who did a, f a flip over. Uh, sunset flip bomb. Uh, Romero did a Diablo armbar on the top rope and uh, Ruckus made the save and then the finish came when they got a spike DR driver onto uh, Jigsaw to get the win and retain the belt. This was just so fast paced. I mean this was a Dragon Gate type spotty match which I have no problem with because you appreciate the spots and unlike a TNA match don't mean to take shots here there was some selling going on which helps. I mean they, instead of just boom 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 let's get up and stuff you know they Legitimates me to the match. Then we went to the rivalry goes to pay per view Austin Aries versus Brian Danielson. Wow, these guys put on a clinic. If you don't like mat wrestling, this match will make you like mat wrestling. If you don't appreciate in ring skill, then you probably should not watch this match and not call yourself a wrestling fan. I mean, this was so awesome. Like, there was a series of knuckle lock reversals where they both went up over and they flipped each other around and stuff like that escaped the cattle mutilation he went for the horns of Ares and while uh, Danielson escaped Ares did a pin with a bridge while he was in the Samoan stomp puller like that was just so amazing in my opinion Ares hit the heat seeking missile on Danielson sent him his head into the guardrail while this also had psychology where Ares was working over the back of the head of Brian Danielson and Danielson was working over Ares arm where he like kicked it into the post while he was on on the apron. Uh, Danielson blocked a roaring elbow into a triangle choke, which was nice. He even did a triangle choke on the top uh, turnbuckle. Aries hit a brain buster off the top rope and he hit the horns of Aries, but repeated elbows and knees by both guys, and then the finish came when Danielson hit an innovative uh, arm bar to get the win. Technical masterpiece. If you don't like the, if you didn't, if you've seen this match and didn't like it, don't call yourself a wrestling fan anymore. And then we went to the which is for the Ring of Honor Championship, Nigel McGuinness versus Tyler Black. Uh, before the match even got officially underway, Nigel cheap shot at Tyler and sent him shoulder first into the ring post, which was so heelish, but still good. Uh, and then from then on, it was basically Nigel working over the arm. Uh, then we went to a spot where they were on the floor. Tyler super kicked him in the face with a chair, and he fell into the crowd did a dive into the crowd, but Nigel had a chair at a block, and then anything that really happened here was Nigel would hit series of lariats and Tyler would kick out. Uh, Black hit a Pele and a reverse brain buster for a near fall. Black did a superplex off the top rope, rolled through, hit an F5 for a near fall. There was Tower of London for a near fall, Jawbreakers for a near fall, he hit the rebound for a near fall, and Nigel locked on the dungeon and finally Tyler tapped. This just Great story here, guys, of the underdog. They put it over so well. This is honestly, though, a great pay-per-view. Overall, it's a 9 out of 10. Overall, thumbs up. Great pay-per-view. Please watch it. Anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.